I'm in Woodstock, Connecticut, which is home of Flight Design USA, and there's a new airplane in town. It's the F-2 LSA. Now, even if you're vaguely familiar with the flight design line, you'll recognize the F-2 as a flight design. And the F-2 is a completely different airplane. It's redesigned, clean sheet from the spinner to the tail. To learn more about this airplane, let's go find Tom Beginney, and then we'll strap into the F-2 and go flying. Behind me is the brand new Flight Design F-2 LSA. I'm very excited about this aircraft. It's brand new from flight design. It employs a lot of uh, innovative aerodynamic features and uh, some clever design ideas. And we're gonna take a tour and I'll show you. Well, starting at the nose, like all uh, flight design aircraft, this one is powered by a Rotax engine. This is the Rotax 912 IS, which is 100 horsepower, fuel injected. It's a very advanced uh, engine. Uh, we have the classic intake and the uh, radiator and uh, the coolant radiator and the oil cooler are located in into the cowling for very low drag setup. You can notice that the the nose is quite a bit longer than the CT series and uh, gives a lot of room and it's very easy to service. Uh, the LSA version of the F2 will be using the new form uh, 65 uh, inch three blade propeller the certified CS23 version will have a MT propeller. So the fuselage of the F2 is made out of prepreg carbon fiber with honeycomb as a core. Uh, it is a good bit longer than the CTLS series and has a rather generous door that makes it very easy for getting in and getting out. The cabin lip entry is about an inch and a half lower than the CTLS. And uh, as you can see, behind the seats well, is a uh, rather large storage area. The tail of the F2 is completely new as well. Where the uh, CTLS had a full-flying stabilator, the F2 has a rather long span uh, stabilizer with a discrete separate elevator. Notice in the center what's called a beaver tail. That's again another part of meeting the ASTM 3180 uh, low speed handling. There's a highly energized flow field around the fuselage of aircraft uh, where the propeller stream gets sucked into the shape and by not having the uh, area to pitch the aircraft up during a departure stall, it really tames out departure stalls. They're really a non-event. The rudder is uh, on the small side, which is part of meeting the uh, spin resistance and low speed handling standard, uh, with a rather prominent high aspect ratio vertical tail. Uh, it still allows you to slip and feels completely normal in crosswind landings. So. The wing of the F2 is longer than the CTLS that uh, we're used to. It has a 34 foot wingspan and a rather high aspect ratio. Uh, it is a one piece wing, whereas the uh, LS series was a two piece wing. And it is made out of prepreg carbon fiber material made by the American company Hexel. So this is the aerodynamic cuff, which is an integral part of the aircraft meeting the stringent ASTM 3180 low speed handling standard. Uh, all new Part 23 aircraft are going to uh, are required to meet this standard for uh, spin resistance and, uh, and stall resistance. The F2 is equipped with a BRS 1350 parachute like all flight design aircraft. It is very easily serviceable through the service hatch at the back of the cabin. Uh, the service intervals for the chute are every six years for a repack and the rocket gets replaced every 12 years. So here we are in the cabin of the new F2. It has a uh, all G3X touch avionics suite. The cabin is 63 inches wide, which is two inches wider than the CTLS. Of course, it's equipped with sticks. Uh, it has uh, dynamically tested uh, seats for the PAR-23 certification. 
with a gas strut uh, system that allows you to slide back and forth in flight and then electrically raise and lower the seats. We had already touched on the baggage space in the back, but the cabin has a very rigid beam that runs from the front to the aft to uh, improve crash worthiness. And another feature is for the first time, airframe mounted airbags in the instrument panel. So the uh, crashworthy cabin, the AmSafe airbags, and the parachute, uh, in doing this, we are really trying to raise the bar on occupant safety for light aircraft. So, Tom, we just departed uh, Woodstock, about 2,400 feet of pavement. Got off pretty quick. What's typical ground roll in the airplane? About 600 feet. And uh, we're fueled with uh, two average-sized guys. How much fuel? 20 gallons on board. So, right at this point, we're about 100 pounds under gross on this plane. So, previous uh, flight-designed airplanes have always had pretty long legs. And uh, what might you expect out of this, cruise speed and, uh, and, and endurance? Well, the cruise speed will be right around 114 knots, 110 to 114 knots. And uh, it carries 34 gallons of fuel plus the header tank on this airplane. The LSA version will not have a header tank. Uh, but that will yield a 850 nautical mile range and probably, uh, you know, five, six hours in the, in the air, more than most people can stand. Sure. We've always found that the real benefit of that is you can fly to a, a reasonable destination with two people on board, not have to buy fuel to get home. So tell them something very different in the F-2 compared to the uh, other flight design airplanes is the avionics suite. You've switched from Dynon to the Garmin G3X Touch dual screen and uh, a traditional center stack of radios. Yes, uh, on the CT series of planes, we did have a lot of uh, remote units, but the, the, since this airplane is going to be certified with uh, EASA, the CS-23, and eventually, we hope, with the uh, FAA, uh, they don't allow uh, remote systems, even though they're certified, to go through an uncertified uh, screen. And uh, this uh, G3X Touch uh, is also coupled to Garmin's GFC 500 Autopilot. They previous had the uh, Dynon systems. GFC 500 has got a lot of envelope protection, including a level button. Yes. Uh, it's actually easier to use than I had uh, feared, and uh, I really, really come to like it. Can a buyer equip? whatever it wants in the main stack. Uh, this airplane's got a, uh, looks like a Garmin Navcom, Garmin transponder, and audio panel with intercom. If they wanted, say, a Garmin GTN 650, or could, could they put that in? Yes, in fact, that's planned because eventually the airplane is planned to be certified uh, part 23, so it can be used for, uh, you know, IFR flight and IMC. So I've got a little bit of time in the CT series airplanes. This F-2 definitely feels different. It's a heavier airplane. I think it's more stable and uh, definitely feels bigger. It does. It feels more like a GA aircraft. If you note the uh, control forces in, uh, on the, the stick and the rudder are, are quite light, uh, but we think it's very proportionate and the pitch stability is rock solid. As you can see, you've been hand flying it the whole time, and uh, as I said, there's a couple times when I thought I had the autopilot, when I was learning the autopilot, I thought I had it on and I hadn't, and I couldn't really tell the difference for a while. There's a, uh, a long spring on the uh, push-pull tube for the elevator, and in the center there's a yoke that is driven fore and aft by a linear actuator. And the, the result of the long tail moment the uh, fully balanced tail and that system, it is dead solid in pitch. Negative flaps for cruise and what we call neutral flaps, which is the natural shape of the airfoil uh, for takeoff and the first notch of flaps and then uh, a much steeper 
landing flap, which goes down to 40 degrees. So we're flying low, we're at 2,000 feet, powered back, and uh, not burning a lot of fuel at about, what, 3.4 uh, gallons an hour? Yeah. And we're burning auto fuel, too, so it's pretty miserly on the uh, cost of living. Um, we're ready to go. All right, so we're going to do a takeoff here, and uh, what's the drill? Uh, flaps are clean. Yep. Uh, and uh, trim is set. Rotax is stone simple, no mixture control, and uh, it's simply full, uh, full power on a takeoff. That's right. There's an aux pump, and that's on for takeoff, and that's it. Ready? Yes, sir. Rotax is spooled up, takeoff power, that's full power, and we're looking at, what, about 55 knots? Yeah. A little bit of back pressure. A bit of back pressure, the nose will float up. There we go. There's the nose Just coming let up. It fly itself off. Yeah, off it goes. Voila. Pretty easy. 70 knots. That's VY. VX at 60. Any tips for landing the new F2? No, it's very straightforward. Just uh, we'll deploy uh, neutral flaps at, uh, we can do it at 90 knots. And uh, then I'll just have you fly down, uh, beam the numbers, we'll, we'll slow it down to 70, and then on final approach, 60 knots. Piece of cake. And flight design turn in final 27 at Wyndham. Okay, give me 60 knots. Fly it all the way down to the runway, 60 knots. Don't flare. Now, you don't want to be flaring that high in this airplane, because if you do, it's a setup for a typical LSA runway crunch. You'll drop it in, maybe bust the landing gear, or bounce, get it into a wonky pilot induced oscillation, maybe smack the prop. Seven to ten hours worth of transition work is what I would want in this airplane with somebody like Pagini riding shotgun, working out the crosswind takeoffs and landings, short field landings, botch go arounds, do it all. Chances are the insurance company is going to want it anyway. Good. Speed it in. So, thinking about the uh, buyer that might transition to this airplane, uh, since it does have a heavier feel and is a little bigger, uh, probably will have some appeal for somebody stepping down from uh, maybe a Bonanza or something, huh? Yes, that's what we anticipate, and uh, we think they're going to feel right at home. Uh, when you combine it with the uh, stall resistant, spin resistant airframe design, uh, we think it's going to hit just right on the mark. Well, Larry, the airplane you just flew was a pre-production prototype, and we're expecting to uh, be producing and delivering uh, six this year to the United States. Um, the plane out the door will be just under two hundred thousand dollars, and uh, we're expecting some nice uh, upgrades and changes to it be, you know, when they come here. And I really want to thank you for uh, flying with us today. Now maybe the bigger story is the future of the Flight Design F-Series. With a slight cabin tweak and larger Rotax 915 IS turbo engine, there might finally be a four-place airplane in the company's future. Call it the F-4. But for now, the clean sheet F-2 with its generous safety systems, pleasant handling, and bigger airplane feel promises to pack a hefty punch at the top of the LSA food chain. Now you could read a full report of the Flight Design F-2 in the upcoming October 2020 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. For Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.